partner with God to unleash supernatural power. This is God's will for us as his sons and daughters to unleash his supernatural power in this world. It reads, but as many as receive him, talking about Jesus Christ as our Savior, to them gave he, everybody shout power, power. to become the what? Sons of God. Even to them, notice, even to them that believe on his name. I'm gonna read that again. Hope that you catch it. But as many as receive him, Jesus Christ, as our Savior, our Lord, to them, everybody shout to them, Amen. gave he power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name. Everybody shout, even to them that believe on his name. Tell somebody else, even to them that believe on his name. Now, Father, we ask that the people hear you through your son. May your spirit lead and guide our hearts, bring us into all truth. May your anointing rest upon this place. Your spirit help us guard our hearts that the enemy shall not steal away this seed word that you are going to release into us today. In Jesus' name, may we get, give you, Father, all the glory. Come on, clap your hands to the Lord. Thank you. Man, you may be seated. It's very important we understand that we have to partner with God in order to unleash his power. Now we know according to scripture that God has given us power to become his sons. And not only just his sons, but the scripture says, even to them that believe on his name. I just want to throw this reference in there because it makes me think about when Jesus was walking with the disciples and he was teaching them and they happened to look over and see a group of people casting out demons and healing in his name and they say, look Lord, they are not yours. But Jesus said, leave them alone as long as they are not against us, but they are for us. And besides, Jesus reminded them that they do it in my name. Someone shout in the name of Jesus. So, there's no doubt that God's word exerts power. If you remember back in the book of Genesis, in the beginning, it was God's word, at his word, that everything was created. God said, let there, and it was. Whatever God did, so it is his word. The Bible says that the power and life of life and death is in our tongues. It's from the words that we speak. The scripture says, it's not what goes in us that defiles us, but it's what goes out of us that defiles us. It's what we speak. So we have to understand that if we're going to partner with God, we have to be ready to, first of all, we have to believe. Because God say to them that come to me, the first thing you have to do is believe that I am God. So just come in the church don't get it, but you have to believe that he is God and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So again, there should be no doubt by the power of God's word. If you have not experienced the power of God's word in your life, then just hold on because it's not just those whom he gave power to become his sons, but it's to all of us that believe. So we want to be able to say to the sons and daughters, and even those that believe, he says he has given them power to become his children. Now, you have to understand is that when, when God's word says that he has given us power to become his sons, that means that there ought to be some action behind us. In other words, we never saw God in scripture being defeated. Amen. Amen. 
We never saw Jesus in scripture being defeated or given up. In fact, Jesus said these words. He says, look, I have already overcome. And because he have overcame, we can overcome in him. Because we have declared the scriptures that I can do all things through who? Christ who strengthened me. So Zechariah said that it is not by might or by power, says the Lord. So the Lord says not by your might or by your power. So in other words, quit trying to demonstrate or unleash God's power through your physical or your natural standpoint. But he says, by my spirit, says the Lord. Another thing I want you to remember, it is written in scripture that the weapons of our warfare are not calm, you know, but they are spiritual, they are powerful, and they are used for the bringing down of strongholds. So we have to understand is that to partner with God to unleash the supernatural power, because most of the time, most people be thinking that God is going to come down. God has already given us himself by the way of the spirit of God. And it is the power that working in us along with our faith and our belief that things happen. Remember when Jesus spoke to the fig tree, they got excited when they saw that the fig tree had withered and died. And Jesus said, if you have just faith of the size of, if you just obey, if you believe what I say and just obey, if you just do. In other words, it's simple as this. Brother Darrell, stand up. Brother Darrell, sit down. It's just as simple as that. If you just, just do just a portion, just a simple thing. And here it is, most of us are trying to do the greatest thing and we have not even begun doing the simple thing first. So that means we're just spinning our wheels. Because if you can't believe God for just the smallest thing, if you can't obey in just the smallest things, then how do you expect God to believe that you're gonna obey in the greater things, amen? So as God's sons and daughters, we have no doubt that his word and message to people is alive and exert power. I want you to look at Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. The writer says this, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and, the, and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So understand that his word is so powerful and quick and sharp that God can divide the soul and the spirit according to scripture there. So we have to understand many of us are living proof of the Bible's power to change lives. Right. And many of us can witness to that. Some of our brothers and sisters were once thieves, mm -hmm. drug addicts. <clears throat> if you can, just shout amen. amen. Or sexual and moral. Other, y'all shout amen. amen. They got quiet on that one, Brother Jock. Others enjoyed a measure of success in this system of things, but felt that something was missing in their life. Now, let me share this with you, because what, what has went on in our life, or once we once were, uh, we, we think that that's awful, but can I serve notice to you that this stuff went on way before you were created? Uh, and that's why I can't understand why people become so uh, surprised when they hear these things, when this stuff was going on in Bible, that I'll prove it to you. Open up your Bibles to Ecclesiastes chapter two. You know anything I tell you, and I already researched it in Scripture. Ecclesiastes chapter two, verse three through eleven. Let me just blow your mind right here, real quick. Are y'all there? Old Testament, Ecclesiastes chapter two, verse three through eleven. I sought in my heart. Listen to what the writer says here. 
to give myself unto wine, yet acquainting my heart with wisdom, and to lay hold on foley till I might see what was that good for the sons of men, which they should do under the heaven all the days of their life. I made me great works. I made me great works. I built me houses. I planted me vineyards. I made me gardens and orchards, and I planted trees in them of all kinds of fruit. I made me pools of water to water therewith the wood that bringeth forth trees. I got me servants and maidens and had servants born in my house. Also I had great possessions of great and small cattle above all that were in Jerusalem before me. I gathered me in verse eight, also silver and gold and peculiar treasures of kings and of the province. I got me men singers and women singers and the delights of the sons of men as musical instruments and that of all sorts. So I was great and increased more than all that were before me in Jerusalem. Also my wisdom remained with me and whatsoever my eyes desired, I kept not from them. I withhold not my heart from any joy for my heart rejoiced in all my labor. And this was my portion of all my labor. Then I looked on all the works that my hands had wrought and on the labor that I had labored to do. And behold, all was vanity and vexation of spirit and there was no profit under the sun. So you see, even the writer here says, look, I, I did all the drinking and I did all of the sexual and moral things. I did everything. I had great wealth and everything. He said, but it was all vanity. It's because the only thing that lasts is when we know. Now watch what, what happened. That was, a, that, that, that was a transformation in his life. How did he do that? He had to partner with God and he had to allow the word of God to change him. So tell somebody, that's why we're not like what we used to be. Now some of you probably can look in other people's life. You probably can look in my life and you can probably point out some things. That's fine because good, it don't bother me why he's still working on that. But that that I used to be, you can't charge me with that. Why? Because I've unleashed his power and I partner with him. When did I do that? When I say, Lord, I'm just tired of living like this. I want to be saved. I want to be changed. Take this from me. Let me become your son, your daughter. You don't have to go through a 12 step program. How many of you know God can deliver you? And, and what happens is when you partner with him by accepting Christ as your savior, then you unleash the power. That's why we testify and say, I thank God that I'm not what I should be, but I show sure thank him I'm not, I'm not what I used to be. Why? It's because he's still working on me. Tell somebody he's still working on me. That, 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 look, 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 we all have attitude, but there's a part of my attitude that you wouldn't have liked back then. But guess what? I thank God that when I partner with him and unleash his supernatural power in my life, he delivered me from that part, but yet I still have a long ways to go. Why? Uh, I'm glad you asked that question. Paul said, I have not laid hold yet to perfection, but I'm reaching. So every day, he's working on me. Yeah, that attitude that you saw yesterday, he's working on it. Somebody shout, I have to be delivered. So you have to understand is that we, when we meet people, we want them to be because they say, I'm a Christian, or because they say, I go to church. We expect for them, Janice, to be just absolutely flawless. That's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. You, you're not going to find that. That you're going to still find some flaws, but that part, listen, you just have to accept it or you don't. But the fact of the matter is, whether they accept it or not, Shan, guess what? It doesn't stop you from unleashing the supernatural power of God in your life. Now watch this. There are some things that we don't want to unleash the supernatural power of God in our life because some things we just want to hold on to just a little bit longer. That's why the disciples say, Lord, look, help our faith. Why? It's because I'm going to need that 
in order to partner with you to unleash the supernatural power in my life. So, so, so we, we still have a long ways to go. You may be smiling today, but tomorrow you may not feel like smiling. Somebody say he's still working on me. But see, when you get tired of that, when you get tired of being mad, when you get tired of all of this frustration and depression, that's when you begin to unleash. See, you have to be the one to do it. You have to unleash that power, that supernatural power of God in your life. So time, uh, and again, individuals who seem hopelessly lost found their way to the path of life by what? By the means of the Bible transforming power because I don't care how hopeless your situation looks, God can still work through anything, amen? We just told you what he said in John chapter 1 and verse 12 of how sharp and quick and powerful his sword is. God can put asunder between the soul and the spirit. So that's nothing too hard for God to do there. So how can we, the question is, how can we unleash the supernatural power of God working through us more than relying upon our natural skills? because most of the time we rely on our natural skills because that's all we, we know what to do. When we should be silent, we speak out. When we should speak out, we be silent. So how can we do that? How can we partner with heaven on this project, activity, opportunity, or problem? What are you saying? Is that when you partner with God, it can be something on your job, it can be a promotion, it can be a project. I'm telling you now, what I've tried and found to work is that when you partner with God, first of all, when you partner with God, you have to move yourself out of the way. You have to be able to say, God, look, I can't do it. I can't understand it. I don't have the wisdom. But if you give me the wisdom, you give me the power, you give me the resource, I know I can get this done. Why? Then you have to look at how is it going to benefit heaven? How is it going to benefit the kingdom of God? Sometimes you just have to say what I used to say. Now you can't do this unless your faith is there. You have to be willing to sell out to God. God, look, I need a promotion. Why? So I can bless the kingdom even more. See? Now I'll show you what Jesus did. See, when Jesus needed money, what he did, he was already partnered with God because he said, me and my father is one. Can I serve notice on you? When you partner with Christ, you can't be half-hearted. You have to be partners with him all the way. Didn't he say in his word, if my word abide where? In you. And you abide where? In my word. That makes you become one with Christ. Jesus became one with the Father and thought it not robbery to be equal to him. Why? It's because he say the works that I do, I do not do of my own. I do of the Father. He say I must work the works of him that sent me while this day. Tell somebody, are you ready, ready to power a partner with God? <coughs> Everybody shout, unleash, unleash. supernatural power. Now let me just take you through a quick exercise here, I want you to do this. Just say, Lord, Lord the, power the power of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit that work it in me, I unleash, I unleash your, supernatural your supernatural power in my situation, in my, situation, in my life, in my, life, in my finances, in my, life, in my home, in my, life, in my community, in my life, on my job. On my See, that's how you unleash it. Now, it's, it's some more to that, and I'll get to it, because there are some things you have to do. So every believer has within them the potential to release kingdom power in their sphere of influence. In Joel, if you examine the scripture, Joel chapter 2 and verse 28, God said, in the last days, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. So the key is to, number one, I'm, I'm going to give you three keys real quick. Number one, the first key is believe you have the right to his power. See, if you don't believe, can't nobody believe for you. See, this woman that had the issue of blood, uh, she went to every doctor, spent all of her money. But until she partnered with Christ by believing that, that Jesus was the Messiah, and then she unleashed uh, by believing the supernatural power. She believed that healing was hers. 
And the Bible says when she touched the hem. So some of you thinking you don't have it because you can't touch heaven. If you can just touch the outskirts of heaven, then God will unleash his supernatural power. So first you have to do what? Believe you have the right to his power. Look at John chapter 1 and verse 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So you need to shout right now, I have a right to his power. So let's see, not just the apostle, not just the prophet, not just the evangelist, the pastor, or the teacher, or the bishop, but everybody ought to shout, everybody, everybody. who believe have the right to his power. That scripture, you, you believe. So why you, now every now and then you have to partner with someone because the Bible say, grab somebody's hand. Where two that assemble themselves together, touch it in the grin, Jesus say, I'll be in the midst. So sometimes you need two or three people to join in with you, not to talk about the situation, but to help you unleash the supernatural power of God in your situation. Sometimes it, 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 it may take three broke people to get together and just join together and unleash the supernatural power of God in your finances. You know, so, it, it, so it, it, if you can't make it there and then you have the power, you have to do it. Remember what Jesus done when they asked him about money. Jesus unleashed the supernatural power of God. He said, Peter, go fishing and the first fish you catch, open up the mouth and get some money out and get some for yourself. See, when you, when you allow the supernatural power of God to be unleashed in the kingdom of God, because look what Jesus said after that. He said, give unto Caesar what is Caesar and then unto the Lord what is the Lord. So you don't have to be afraid when you unleash the supernatural power of God. So you have to believe that you have the right. Number two, you have to understand how to use his power. You have to understand how to use it. Because if you don't understand how to use his power, you would be abused of his power. And that's why we have so many leaders that, that are failing, and I don't care whether if it's two members or if it's 5,000. You can easily abuse the power of God. Because if you don't have the love of God for people, then you will abuse people with your authority and with your power. They still tell, you still got leaders who tell people, if you don't do this, then God going to kill you and send you to hell. And it's not about, it's not about doing, it, it, it basically sometimes boils down to money. If you don't give me some money, God going to kill you and send you to hell. Listen, you have to know what the word of God says for yourself, quit allowing people. That's why I would not take the responsibility to think for any of you. Don't even ask me to think for you because I'm gonna be doing everything in the power that God has placed in me, according to Jeremiah 3 and 15, is to feed you with knowledge and understanding so you can think for yourself. See, the most defeated person in the world is that person who has been taught not to think for yourself. But the most powerful person in the world is the one who learned how to think for themselves. See, the prodigal son ended up where he was because he allowed everybody to think for him. But when he had nothing, and sometimes situations have to bring us to nothing, in order to teach us how to think for ourselves. How does that happen? Number one, when you have nothing, nobody want to talk to you. They'll talk about you and talk down. Come on, what, 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 what Archbishop Thomas said, preach Thomas, I'ma say, I'ma use his words. Preach Baines, I think I will. So think about it. When they could no longer think for him, they stopped talking to him. Because he had nothing of value. So then he began to think for himself. And when he began to think for himself, he partnered with God and unleashed that supernatural power of God in his life. And he journeyed all the way back and found out that it was even greater than it was when he left. So number two, understand how to use his power. And number three, be willing to release it when he directs you to. See, you, if people quickly want to release 
other things. They want to release mess. They want to release garbage. You know, if you all read one of my posts, got a post that came in, and I immediately deleted the person. I deleted them completely off my friendship. It's because I told them, do not send me no sexual immoral things in a message or on the page or you will be deleted. <clears throat> Why? It's because I have the power and authority to control that. So what you need to do is be willing to release it with any direct. Look at Mark chapter 16, verse 17 and 18. You have to be willing to, again, understand how to use his power. Number two, number three, be willing to release it when he directs you. Mark chapter 16, verse 17 and 18. And these signs shall follow them that believe. See, it goes back to believe. You can shut the heat down. In my name shall they cast out demons. Y'all see that? In my name. Now, I have to serve notice because a lot of this stuff they talking about demons are not really demons. You know, they identify them as demons. I hear people all the time when they see people, <clears throat> uh, when they look at crack cocaine, <clears throat> you know what they say? That's a demon spirit. No, it's not. It's crack cocaine. See, you cannot see spirits unless they manifest in a body. You can't see the Holy Spirit unless he is manifested in a body. See? Now what you can see is the works or the effects of the demonic spirit. So you see, I, I, you know, so he says, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. Now, a lot of people take this as a new language. You know, uh, they take it as a new language. But that ain't what the scripture is saying. Speak with new tongues. In other words, you're no longer going to speak your words. When you partner with God, you're going to speak his words. See? You're going to speak his words. That's why I don't I'm believe in that song. Say, when I got saved, my hands look new. I don't go the places that I used to go. Yes, you do, because we all used we Look, when we was a sinner, we went to the grocery store. Now that we saved, we still go. We're just looking for bargains now. So we, we, we I mean, you, got, you can't get caught up in this stuff. That's why so many people is in bondage. This is what happened that people don't understand in Jeremiah chapter 29 and 11. When God say, I know the plans, it's because what was going on is that they allowed these false prophets to think for them and speak for them. And God said, Jeremiah, go tell my people, I know the thoughts and the plans that I have towards them. Yeah. So God knows. Look at somebody and say, thank you. Thank you. But I got to go with God. Go. So look what he says. They shall take up <clears throat> serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. That's why, I, I, you know, I mean, until, until they broadcast it on news, I stick with heaven. I'll say it again. You go to the hospital, you go to the schools, all of these places are the most disinfected places you can find, but yet everybody's getting the flu. Here it is at the churches, and the reason why I know that, because I haven't been around enough churches, is that you don't have enough people to clean. And when they do clean, they're going to vacuum, they're going to dust, they're going to mop, and they're going to sweep. But they're not going to go around and spray Lysol on every door handle. They're not going to wipe down everything. But yet, guess what? There's been no reported cases of everyone catching the flu. Why? It's because according to his word, he's a keeper. That's why, parents, you have the obligation. Don't let your, look, look, look. If you got to get up early. Or if you're a little bit too lazy and can't get
get up early, do it before you go to sleep. Just ask God to cover your children in his healing. When they go out among, it's not that, that, that the children is nasty or people are nasty or unclean. There are some stuff going on that you don't understand. And they ain't going to tell you everything. Here I, here I go again. Y'all saw, saw what happened not long ago over in Flint. Think it was Flint? Where they, the water was contaminated and they didn't tell the people. And they allowed them to continue to drink this, drink this, and drink this. I'm not going to get off into that because I don't want y'all thinking you're getting away with it because you go and you go buy you some bottled water and you're getting away with it. I, I'm not going to even go there with you because I don't want to sit in no alerts. But, but watch this. He says, uh, and, and it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick. Lay hands on somebody. And he say, and they shall recover. But that's when you unleash the supernatural power of God. You can do it. And if nothing else, raise your hand, Brandon, Brandon, Brady. If you do nothing else, do like he do. Imitate your, 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 your pastor. If everybody in the house got to have oil running on them, put oil on them. Lay hands on them and pray for them. First time, first thing we, we get sick, and I'm not counting out the doctors, but look, first time somebody gets sick, the first thing they do is that they don't release or even think about God, they run to the emergency room. And they sit there all night long, and then they send you home the next morning, you say, well, what did they say? They ain't say nothing. They ain't do nothing but just sent me home and here, here's those famous words. Follow up with your main physician. See, so you, you know, I, 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 I never forget. Stephon and them, they wasn't born yet, but they brother Trey. You remember that? Trey used to have seizures real bad. And we was in a revival over in the little storefront. We was in a revival. And he caught a seizure and they was getting ready to leave out to the emergency room. And the revivalists say, can we just pray for him before you leave out with him? Can I serve notice? I don't even think they made it to the hospital that night. Laid hands on him, the seizure stopped. Trey is a full grown man now. I don't think he ever had another seizure that I heard of. Never had another. See, when you unleash the supernatural power of God into your situation, remember I talked about this down there with West Ham. It's done. And when it's done, it's done forever. But it can only happen at your level of belief. Amen? See, what y'all don't understand, stand up, Elijah. See, Elijah is a twin. And let me tell you something. The devil will attack you, he don't care where. See, the, the devil did not want this child to be born. Attacked while he was still, him and his sister were still in his mother's womb. Happened right in the service. And her testimony was, is that when she stood up to praise God and was clapping her hands beginning to praise God, a voice, the, the enemy, the devil spoke to her and said, shut up and sit down, don't you clap your hands. And, and, and when she refused, he attacked her right then. Attacked her right in the service. And then when we unleash the power of God into her life, he was born. The sister was born, but she didn't make it. But God has his way of what he wanted. So you got to listen. Thank you. Listen, Paul told us something. Very important. Let me hear him wrap this on. We do not wrestle with flesh and blood. So it behooves you to partner with God and start learning how to unleash God's supernatural power because he want us to. So many Christians have been taught that salvation is enough simply, you know, a get out of hell free call. Then do kind works. 
and pray for the rapture. No, it's more to it than that. For those of us who understand how to use the power and willing to release it as his direction is exactly what Jesus taught in John chapter 14 and verse 12. He said, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. Watch this here, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. So you have to understand that it's been already settled in heaven that you are somebody. You're not powerless. The Bible even teaches us is that when you're weak, say you're strong. Unleash that power because it's the power that working in you. When you start saying, I can do all things, you got to be ready to do all things. That means I have taken the limit off of God and I'll look at somebody and say, I'm ready to unleash. Tell three people, you, you better watch. You may be holding on to your sickness. You may get healed today. Tell your neighbor, you may get delivered today. Now, I know a lot of people don't want to. And God don't invade it. Brother Darrell, look, they're not fooling me. They don't want to be healed. And, and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with it because to be healed means you have to go back to work. Because you can no longer get, get the check. Yeah. But that's okay. It's no problem with that. Tell somebody, it's no problem with that. Wish I could get a check, but thank God I get a check. I get a retirement check. So there's nothing wrong with that. But don't feel that you are powerless. Amen? So he, he says, truly, truly, I say unto you. He who believes in me will do the works that I do. So what was the works that Jesus did? It was healing, delivering, giving people the truth, teaching them, not entertaining them, not playing on their emotions. He spoke about the situation and say, render unto Caesar what is Caesar, give unto the Lord what is the Lord, and that was it. In fact, I love to speak these words. Let's settle it right now. How you give is how you receive. That's the word. Don't have to talk about it no more. If you want everybody to treat you nice, start treating everybody nice. If you want everybody to love you, start loving them. Oh, some of y'all don't get it. I know. I know you ain't there yet. No, no, you ain't got to clap. I know you ain't there yet. Let, let me help you out. See, see, God is so versatile. Let me help you out. Let, let, I'm not going to call Teddy from the dead. Teddy Pendergrass. See, they, they, they forgot who is Teddy. Teddy said, and, and if I could if I could have helped him with writing this song, I would have said, Teddy, that's what's wrong now. Is you people is looking for that 50 50, not 60 40, not 70 30. But you said 50 50 love. But if I can help him write that song now, rewrite it, I'll tell him you got to have a hundred. You got to have a hundred. For those of you that, that, that want to get married, you better make sure if all they, if they play that song, walk away from them. Because let me share something with you. If that's all, see, look, if that's all that, that you have to bring is 50, then who get the other 50? Am I making sense? All right, now I'm with y'all. I'm anointed. Y'all come on, let's go back. We're back in the present. Okay, so Jesus gave his disciples training how to properly release heaven's supernatural power on earth. And he'll guide you also if you ask him. In Matthew 7 and 7, he says, Ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Luke 11 and 9, And I say unto you, Ask and it shall be what? Given you. Seek and you shall find. So all of these, Jesus says the same thing. In John 14 and 26, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. So you have to understand is that 
We have no excuse not to be releasing the supernatural power of God. It's time for leaders, but you know what? I don't fault the leaders, I fault the followers. Because if you love being entertained, then that means that your leader don't really have to really study too much of nothing. Because they know that you're looking for an entertainment. People looking just to walk out to say we had good church today. The spirit of God was high. I don't need no high spirit. I need the spirit of God to be powerful and quick to work in my situation. Why? After you get through feeling good, reality is still waiting on you. Oh, do I have a witness somewhere? Yeah, 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 yeah. See, see, doctor told you that you have what they call that heart condition. Congestive heart failure, and you come in and you felt good, and you felt oh, the spirit of God was good. I didn't feel tired. God was good. I praised God and I danced. And let me tell y'all, I've been diagnosed with congestive heart failure. But when you walk out that door, reality hit because now you ain't got word that you don't went. You've been rushed to the hospital. But see, if you when you unleash the power of God. Jesus say, what well, two or three are sending themselves together, touching and agreeing in my name. He says, there I will be in the midst. And when he is in the midst, you leave out healed. Oh, let me say that again. You leave out healed. Maybe they reading their cell phones. You leave out healed. Everybody shout party in heaven. Partnering with heaven is simply asking the Holy Spirit, okay, what do you want me to do right now in this situation? Because remember, he's, he, he's in you. He's about to unleash. You know, what do you want me to do in this situation? Regardless of where you are or the situation you face, partnering with heaven is understanding God's will. What is God's will? Love, joy, peace, prosperity, healing, and so on. God's will is whatever we need. Then asking the Holy Spirit, how do you want me to move? How do you want to move through me now? That's when you say, use me, Spirit of God. What, 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 what are we going to do in this situation? How do you want me to handle this situation? You know, that, that's, and I'm telling you all, it even works in interviews. It works in testing. When you just say, God, look, 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 God don't just unleash the supernatural power when there's trouble, you need knowledge. He said, if you need knowledge, wisdom rather, come to me and ask. And I'll give it to you. And when God give it to you, he give you plenty of it. If you don't believe me, partner with him and get one of those subjects. And say, Lord, I can't deal with it. I don't, now don't sit there just like a dummy and do nothing and say the Holy Spirit go, it ain't gonna happen. You gotta be able to say, Spirit of God, help me right now. How I'ma deal with this situation? How I'ma make this situation happen? What is it you wanna do with me right now? Somebody ought to shout, Lose, use me, Lord. Put your neighbor and say, I'm about to unleash. See, that, and that's what you got to do. Don't vent when you get angry and frustrated. You got to unleash that supernatural power. Amen? See, when you unleash your, your anger, you vent your frustration, you just gave victory to the devil. Or you just satisfied your flesh. See? But if you unleash the power of the Holy Spirit. So God's will is not mysterious. The Bible clearly teaches us his will that all should come to salvation to overcome the devil's stronghold on his creation. Somebody shout, tell your neighbor that stronghold is about to be broken. Because he gave us the anointing for that. I don't care what that stronghold is. It's about to be broken. When is it about to be broken? See, we all say when Jesus show up, if that's when it's going to be broken, then we're in trouble because we don't know when Jesus is going to show up. Because Jesus say, I don't even know when until the Father sent me. So I suggest for you to start relying on the Holy Spirit that's in you. That's why it bothers me when people say, I had a talk with Jesus and he said this. When Jesus say, I'm sitting next to the Father, the Holy Spirit is in you. Listen to him. 
He's going to bring back to your remembrance what I commanded him. But everybody want to make everybody think, Michelle, that they are great. I, I sit down with Jesus last night at the dinner table. Oh, yeah. Well, that means we missed the rapture. And it ain't do you no good either. Because you still here. So we all in trouble. Because the Bible says when he returns, we're going to be raptured up. I haven't been changed unless we're in Jerusalem. Last time I checked, my address was still on Silver Stream. And the streets were not gold. And my gates is wood. So that lets me know in reality, I'm still here on earth. You forget about the power that work in you. Even Jesus, God has a, 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 a system that Jesus say, no man goeth unto the Father except what? By me or through me. So now he gave us the Holy Spirit and he said, all you have to do is act, unleash the power and the spirit that worketh in you. See, the Holy Spirit that worketh in you. See, so God's will is not mysterious. It's not a mystery. So again, as, as my closing statements here, he wants us to free people, free the captive, heal the sick, comfort the brokenhearted, rebuild the ruins of the city, and so much more. What do you mean by rebuild, rebuild the ruins of the city? Look at yourself. Jesus said that we are a city that sit on the hill. We've been broken, but we have the power if we unleash it to build it back. You know, how was it broken? All the used to be drug addicts stand up. All the used to be alcoholics stand up. All the used to be sleep, well, I get you, sleeping around with somebody who wasn't your husband. You know, you all did that because you haven't been married all your life. Uh, I know I get everybody. Them young folks ain't gonna stand because they don't want their parents to know what's going on. But that's okay. So now, what, what do you mean about the city? I ain't asked you to stand to embarrass you. What you see is broken rules, broken fences, messed up. But then, when the power of Jesus was unleashed and the supernatural power took place, then it straightened all of us out. Give, give God a hand clap. You can be seated. That's called repairing the city. Because he said you are a city that sits on a hill that cannot be hidden. So that's why he give us power to unleash the supernatural that we can fix the city. It don't make no difference. You have to understand. Tell people all the time, we all, not, well, let me not say all of us, but you know, most of us that had, let me just use myself then. I've had children out of wedlock. I hadn't been saved all my life. But it, it didn't make, look, look, look what God did. I had to re, be rebuilt. And once I was rebuilt, now I become a pillar in the city. So what are you? You become a pillar in the city. You know, they can see, you ever go to historical places and you see the scars, and the concrete chips and the marks on it, but it's still standing strong. You ought to shout, I have the scars to prove it, but I'm still standing strong. <laughs> so you don't have to tear everything down. You just strengthen it. So now, to better partner with heaven, simply look around your environment and see what part of heaven is missing. See what part of heaven. When you look in somebody's life, and don't, don't, try to, don't try to do all that, that mindset the Spirit of the Lord showed me is something going on with you. If, if, look, now, 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 whenever he show you something, and if you partner with him and don't be a busybody, he will allow you to unleash that supernatural power to restore the joy. Now, 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 y'all don't believe that, right? Jesus told the disciples, he said, go. And don't take no extra purse, strip or nothing. Wherever you go, you let them take care of you. And if they don't, then what you do is dust your feet. Take the dust off your feet at the seals of the door. Walk and take your peace with you. Tell somebody, I'm going to unleash some power. Supernatural power. Just touch somebody on the shoulder and say, I release supernatural power of peace. Yeah, you got, you got to, and, and, and watch this here. 
Sometimes you have to continue to say them words because you know what they used to say? It's a good thought, but, but the, the, the watch this here. They say if a, a, a liar tell a lie enough, they'll believe their own lie. So what am I saying? If you speak God's word enough until you get to that point to believe it, then you'll see the effects of the power. You, you can't, I, I don't care if you lay hands and say you're healed. I will, I, I'll unleash the supernatural power of healing in your life. And they go to the doctor and come back and say they still sick. I release the supernatural power of healing in your life. I don't care how many times you keep doing it until you believe that you have released it. Y'all remember when Elder Grigsby was diagnosed with cancer and every, every week he was at the altar, every Wednesday night he was at the altar, every Sunday morning at the altar, barely could walk, but at the altar he said, he say, Pastor, I'm not afraid to die. I'm just not ready to die because of my family. I say, man, look, family gonna be okay, but you got to believe. He kept believing. He kept believing. His wife said, he said, my wife told me, why you keep going to the altar? He said, kept. So she went did her FMLA, and he went to the doctor for that last prep, and they say, Mr. Grigsby, you can go back to work. We don't see nothing. So you have to, you, you can't give up. It's not that God cannot do it. You just can't give up. Where, where, where Kenneth? He's gone. I, I never forget Kenneth Grigsby. When mommy was diagnosed, y'all remember that? Now some of y'all knew it, but everybody didn't know it. She was diagnosed, HIV positive. They called me and gave the word. I said, just tell her, come on. I didn't alert the church because most people don't understand. So she came, she got in line. We prayed for her. Next thing I know, so Grace called and said, guess what? God healed her. Took her off all of her medication. Doctor told her she don't have AIDS. She had two babies, no AIDS, husband, no AIDS. And mommy, every time mommy got to the point that the enemy had her at the point of death, they called up on the church. We pray she'll get up off her deathbed. So you have to believe that you're a partner because the work that we do, we cannot get credit for. Why? It is not our work. It's heaven's work. You ought to be rejoicing just to be a part of it. So we have to partner. No pain, no tears, no cancer, no poverty, no anger. Once the Holy Spirit points out something to you, simply ask, okay, what do you want me to do? Then whatever he says to you, do it. Just as the servants did at the wedding in Canaan. They needed a miracle. There were no more wine. And his mother said, whatever he tells you to do, do it. For at the end of your ability lies a miracle. Stand to your feet. And the only way you're going to experience the miracle, you have to do it. You have to do it. You have to believe it. He said it all through his Bible. He said, if any among you sick, let them call for the elders. Let the elders go pray over them, anoint them with all their hands on them. The sick shall be healed. If they committed any sins, their sins will be forgiven. Today is your day. Today is your day for the unleashing of the supernatural power of heaven to be upon you. To be upon you. If you desire to come, then come. Whatever you believe, you got to be willing to believe today, 